Okay, wonderful. Hopefully everyone can see my screen. So let's get started. Ion Nutrition Going Beyond Carrots. So the time that we spend together here today, I hope will be the most important hour or two hours um, that you spend when it comes to taking care of your eyes, not just for the moment, but really for the future, for the years and decades to come, because so much of ocular health really rests upon our nutrition. And I hope that what I will share with you today will change the way that you make dietary choices to specifically support your eye health and prevent conditions that may lead to vision impairment or even blindness. So again, food is so, so important to provide our eyes with the foundational nutrients they need to stay healthy. And I'm really a huge advocate of this quote, food is medicine, let food be thy medicine and me let medicine be thy food. I'm sure many people have probably heard this before, but when it comes to vision health, when it comes to the prevention of conditions like um, macular degeneration, diabetic retinopathy, dry eye, cataracts, glaucoma, and many more, um, I really have seen the power of food in terms of um, including that in the management of my patients and how uh, diet nutrition has really um, changed the trajectory of a lot of people's ocular disease. And in some cases, even reversed their disease, um, even brought back their vision and also prevented future vision loss. So when it comes to food, I oftentimes ask my patients this question just for fun. I ask them, what food do you think is most important for your eye health? And the vast majority of people will respond with this. Well, carrots, isn't it true if I just eat carrots uh, that will keep my eyes healthy? Um, but what I'll tell you is that when it comes to eye health and nutrition, carrots are really the tip of the iceberg when it comes to ocular nutrition. And um, there are many, many nutrients, many foods that can provide those nutrients. And that's really what I'll be sharing with you today. But before we get to that, I would, I thought I would also share with you this historical tidbit about this urban myth. How did carrots get associated with eye disease? Well, this goes back to World War II and what was happening in Europe during World War II. And basically the Germans were flying in and dropping bombs over Great Britain. And they were doing this mainly at nighttime. So they were doing these nighttime air, um, air bomb raids. And um, what the, the British did was actually they were able to spot those German planes in the sky and shoot them down. And so then the Germans were, th were wondering, you know, how is it that the British can detect our planes even in the dead, the blackness of night and still be able to detect our planes and shoot them down? So the British started spreading this, this, um, this rumor that uh, their pilots were all eating lots of carrots and carrots were providing beta carotene that helped with their night vision. And that's how the British were able to shoot down the planes. Now, that's really a partial myth because, yes, carrots are important. Yes, beta carotene is important to prevent night, uh, to uh, optimize night vision. But the truth is that the British had developed a new technology that allow allowed them to detect the planes in the sky and shoot them down. And that technology was actually radar. And back then in the late 19 or 1940s, tech, uh, radar was brand new. And, um, and that's really how the British were able to to do this feat of, of excellent night vision. Now, what happened after that time was that because this myth was being propagated, um, many people started to eat carrots. So basically the German pilots all began eating carrots. Uh, other people in the military started eating carrots and the entire world started eating carrots, thinking that that's what would allow them to have perfect, excellent 2020 vision. Um, now, at that time, actually, there was a huge surplus of carrots because of uh, this myth being propagated and people were eating carrot stews, carrot cake, carrots and salads and et cetera. So um, that's how it got, got propagated. And it's still through the generations that still carry through today. But the truth is, as I mentioned earlier, it's not just one nutrient, one food that will support our eyes. It really is a diversity of nutrients and a diversity of foods that will help to support eye health. And when you think about the eye, many people actually don't really think about the eye very much. They take for granted that they will have excellent vision. However, we should think about our vision. We should be proactive about it rather than taking it for granted. But when you think about the eye, the eye as an organ is actually quite small. It's about the size of a golf ball, but it has many, many important structures inside. And this diagram here on the left just shows you a few of the over 40 different structures that comprise the eyeball. 
So there's in the front of the eye, there's the cornea. By the way, this is a cross section through the eye. So normally when we look at the eye, we look at the eye from the front of the eye. So we see the white part, we see the, the colored part, with the, which is the iris. We see the pupil, which is the dark circle in the middle. But if you were to take this eyeball, cut it in half, you would see this cross section. And um, I'll just orient you to a few structures of the, of the eye. The front part, again, is the cornea. It's a transparent do dome that allows light rays to come in. And then um, behind that, we have the iris, which is the colored part of the eye. Now, different people have different colored eyes, and this is the iris that gives people that color, whether it's blue or green or brown or hazel. Um, that color comes from the iris. In the center of the iris, I mentioned again that circle in the middle of the eye is the pupil, and this is dynamic. It can change size. It can allow light rays to enter even in dark conditions by getting really big. In bright sunlight, it, was mo it will most likely shrink down to a very, very small size. Again, the pupil is constantly changing, but it is a part of the eye, a structure of the eye. Behind the pupil sits the lens, and that's what's re represented here by this disc-like white structure is the lens. Now the lens is also dynamic. It can change shape, it can change size, and it allows us to focus at different distances, whether we're looking at far away, um, basically infinity in the distance, whether we're looking at something at intermediate distance, for example, if you're looking at your computer screen, that's intermediate distance, maybe two, two or three feet away, um, or a monitor, for example, slightly further, um, if you're, or if you're looking at something up close, that's usually at about 12 to 14 inches from one's face. So the lens is able to change its shape to focus at distance, intermediate distances, and up close. Um, next we have behind that, we have a jelly in the back of the eye. This is called the vitreous body that helps to keep the shape of the eye. It's mainly made out of water and collagen and other proteins as well. And in the back of the eye, if I open up this model eyeball here and take out this plastic structure, which represents the vitreous, um, behind that is the orange structure you see here with these red and blue blood vessels. This orange structure represents the retina. And the retina is the tissue in the back of the eye that captures light rays, processes those light rays into um into uh, impulses that get sent through the optic nerve, which is this white, uh, sorry, yellow structure right here. This connects up with the brain behind the eyes. So again, there's a whole system that make up makes up the eyeball. Again, many, many complex structures and over 200 different cell types within the eye. So the reason I go through all of that with you is because I want you to understand that the eyeball is complex. Therefore, the nutrition that can best support the eyeball is also complex. And um, what I've done is um, I had done a lot of research in preparation for my book, Beyond Carrots, Best Foods for Eye Health A to Z. And as I was researching for that book about ocular nutrition, I realized that we actually need not just beta carotene to support our eyes, we actually need over 30 different nutrients to fully support our eye health. And the good news is, yes, it may seem like a lot, 30 nutrients. Oh my goodness, how am I going to get in 30 nutrients from my eye health? The good news is most of those nutrients are relatively available through foods. Some of those nutrients our bodies can make, but many of them our bodies cannot make. So we need to get them externally, mainly through food, ideally through food, but also maybe food plus supplementation. So 30 nutrients, many, many foods. And in my book, in chapter two of my book, um, called the Therapeutic Foods for Eye Health, I go through 40 of the foods that are richest in the eye health nutrients. Again, so 30 nutrients, 40 foods. And luckily, these foods, they provide not just one nutrient. The reason I call them therapeutic foods is they provide multiple nutrients to support eye health. So they're very, very powerful and very nutrient dense. Now, I mentioned this just earlier. Uh, in terms of these 30 plus nutrients needed for optimal eye health, Many of them are essential, meaning that our bodies cannot produce them on our, on our, on our own. Um, some of them are endogenously produced, for example, vitamin D. Our body can make vitamin D when exposed to sunlight. And also antioxidants such as glutathione can be produced by the body. And even glutathione's production can be upregulated by the body. So there are ways to upregulate your glutathione production. Um, now, the other thing I want to point out 
uh, before we get into some of these nutrients, these specific nutrients, is that fortunately, there is much duplication in the nutritional needs of the different parts of the eye. So it's not that, okay, you just need these nutrients for your cornea, and you just need these nutrients for your lens, and these for your retina, and these for your optic nerve. There is much duplication here in terms of the nutrients that will support also your, your corneal health, your lens health, your optic nerve health, your retinal health. So that's a good thing. Um, the other really good thing is that many of these nutrients that I'm going to be sharing with you today not only support your vision health, but they have also been shown to be beneficial for brain health. And also, here's another fun fact. The eye is actually a direct extension of the brain, and it's part of your central nervous system. So the eye is a part of the brain. So when you promote your eye health, you're also promoting your brain health. And not only that, many of the nutrients I'll be sharing with you today promote other organ systems within your body as well. So also um, some of these nutrients will support your cardiometabolic health. They will support your skin health. They will support your gut health. They will also support your immune system and your immune health. So multiple, multiple benefits. When you're thinking about nutrition for the eyes, don't just thinking about eating right for your sight. Really think about eating right for your entire body. That's really the way you should be thinking about it. So um, let's, I just wanted to share with you the complexity of the eye and some of the nutrients. And then I'm going to just choose a few of these 30 or so nutrients to go into more depth on. Um, so when we think about the surface of the eye, the very outermost part of the eye, it's not just one part. It's actually uh, made up of the cornea, the conjunctiva, which is the covering of the eye or like the skin of the eye, the sclera, which is the white part the eyelids, the eyelashes, the glands in the eyelids, and the lacrimal gland, which sits up here behind your eyelid, your upper eyelid, that produces a lot of the tears that coat the surface of your eye. So what are the nutrients to support just the surface of the eye? Well, take a look here. We need antioxidants, such as vitamins A, C, and E. We need fatty acids, primarily the omega-3 fatty acids, including DHA, EPA, and ALA. We need a variety of minerals, such as sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium, zinc, copper, and manganese. We also need collagen because much of the eye is made out of collagen. And the building blocks of collagen are amino acids. So we need various proteins and specific proteins that help make up some of the collagens found in the eye include proline, glycine, and hydroxyproline. We also need hydration for our tears to help coat and lubricate the surface of the eye. So this is just for one section of the eye. We need all of these nutrients. Now let's move on. Think about the nutrients that can support your lens. Again, the lens is the structure that helps you to focus. It's inside the eye. And when the lens um, gets older, when it starts to oxidize, it becomes, um, instead of being transparent, it can become opaque which leads to a cataract. So a cataract is really when the lens in the natural eye, instead of being transparent, becomes cloudy. Think of it like a dirty window. You know, initially you have a nice clean window, but when it's exposed to the elements over time, weather and dust and storms, et cetera, it starts to get cloudy and dirty and it's very hard to see through that window. That's exactly what happens with the lens as we all get older. So what are this, the, um, the nutrients that can support your lens? Well, the antioxidants, again, similar to the surface of the eye, we have vitamins A, C, and E, also glutathione, which is the body's master antioxidant, also the macular carotenoids, lutein, and zeaxanthin. And don't worry if you don't yet know what these are, because I'm going to be going into a lot more depth on these two nutrients in just a few minutes. Um, now, moving on to the back part of the eye. Um, the retina and the cord, which is the, the um, vascular layer underneath the retina that supports the retina. Um, the retina actually has many different types of cells. Here, I'm showing you um, just a couple of the types of cells, but um, and there are nine layers to the retina. So again, it's really, really complex. You don't need to understand all the complexity um, in detail, but just know that it's very metabolically active. So your retina is highly metabolically active. It's constantly needing energy in the form of ATP. The retina is also, because that's what um, the retina captures light rays, it's also very susceptible to oxidative stress and free radical damage. So that's why 
when it comes to the nutrients that support the retina, we need the antioxidants. So we need um, the macular carotenoids in particular. And again, in just a few moments, I'm going to go into what the macular carotenoids are, but we need lutein, zeaxanthin, mesozeaxanthin. We also need in terms of antioxidants, um, we see glutathione here again. We see again, vitamin C and E. I should also include vitamin A in there. It is important as well. Um, we also need alpha lipoic acid and N-acetylcysteine. And these are some endogenous antioxidants. Yes, some of them we can get from foods as well, but mainly they're endogenous. Um, we also, for retinal health, we also need the omega-3s, in particular DHA, EPA, and ALA. We need certain minerals, iron, selenium, um, copper, and zinc. We need a range of the B vitamins because we, again, the retina is very metabolically active. It's constantly producing ATPs. And in order to produce that much energy, we need lots of B vitamins to support the energy cycle, um, uh, the, the Krebs cycle, basically. And we also need hydration to support the retina to make sure that enough blood flow is getting to the retina um, and nutrients carried by blood and, and oxygen carried by blood as well. So now let's talk about, um, this is the last part of the eye I'll share with you and the nutritional needs of the eye. So the back of the eye, the optic nerve, remember I said, this is what connects the eyeball to the brain. And is this is also very metabolically active. So again, the B vitamins come up here as well. Specifically, we need vitamin B12, which is cobalamin. We need folate, which is vitamin B9. We need um, B1, B2, B3, B6. Uh, we also need, again, antioxidants, glutathione, vitamin C and E. We need certain minerals. We need the omegas. In addition, vitamin D is also important for optic nerve health. Coenzyme Q10 for ATP production by mitochondria and citicoline, which is a natural compound that is a precursor to phosphatidylcholine. And phosphatidylcholine is important for uh, structural stability of cell membranes in the eye, uh, in the various different cells of the eye. So all in all, this is a very busy slide. I know it's kind of overwhelming when you think about it, but here I'm sharing with you the 30 plus nutrients you need to support the various different parts of your eye. Now, again, Thank you.